Ladies and gentlemen, what's going on? It's Eagle Talks Football. We are back again with another video. Mikel Moreno has just been announced by Arsenal. Eddie Nketiah is headed to Crystal Palace. We got the here you go. And we're going to be talking about which forward we're going to be signing. But before we go any further, this is a call of action, a call of duty. I need you guys to do me a favor. Hit that like button because it helps with the channel massively. You don't understand how much it means to me. The last two videos, we hit 200 plus likes. Let's try to get 300 plus likes on today's video. And let's go. Uh, before we go any further, we need to start by talking about Mikel Moreno signing for Arsenal. Yes, this is the untold secret, ladies and gentlemen. We have been waiting for Mikel Moreno's uh, uh, to be to be agreed, done, and dusted, and and the player to uh, to to be announced by the Arsenal uh, website. He has now been announced by the Arsenal website, and you know something? His Instagram post he actually showed that he's a Arsenal fan growing up as a youngster. Mikel Moreno, of course, is a left footed left-sided eight slash dm he's spanish international played at real sociedad he will be wearing the number 23 shirt at arsenal and as you can see here as a child as a child he was a young arsenal fan so it's it's wonderful to see he will also be wearing the number 23 as you can see what's on his leg right there and uh if you need to know more about Mikel moreno you can go on the arsenal website and they have 15 things that you need to know about Mikel moreno on here on the Arsenal website. These are always fun to check out. Fun to check out. Uh, obviously, his dad played football. And you can see where he grew up, what his hometown hero was, where he where he started. He actually played for Newcastle and played against us in the past. What his hobby is, apparently he likes to play basketball. Uh, early success in his career. Uh, uh, success at Sociedad. Success for Spain, of course. Even just winning the Euros most recently what his favorite family celebration is, this and more. But enough about that. You guys didn't come here for, uh, to see Mikel Moreno. You guys, we'll, we speak about that more throughout, uh, throughout, the, throughout, uh, throughout the season as he is now an Arsenal player, what is his best position and everything else. Let's talk about Eddie and Ketia because that's one thing that you guys are very fond of. We've gotten the here you go, ladies and gentlemen, for Eddie and Ketia. Yes, we have gotten the here you go. And to the people who are criticizing Arsenal, saying we were never going to get enough money for Eddie and Ketia, well, we got 30 million pounds for Eddie and Ketia. And in my opinion, he's an upgrade on Jordan Ayew, who left uh, Crystal Palace. This guy, Eddie and Ketia, will bag for Crystal Palace. And they have gotten a 25 million pound fee plus five million add-ons. The player is officially moving on a permanent move from Arsenal to Crystal Palace. And I think he's going to cook for Crystal Palace. I don't know about you guys. Let me know what you think of Eddie and Ketia will do for Crystal Palace. But in my opinion, I think he will cook for Crystal Palace. How to the extent that cooking is, we'll find out. But at this moment in time, this is great, 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 great news, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm quite excited about the, the future for Arsenal now that we're now that we're getting players out the door because this is interesting. We've gotten Eddie and Ketty out the door. And also, if you guys haven't seen, it's not just Eddie. We also got we also got Fabio Vieira out the door also. We also got Fabio Vieira out the door also. I'm going to show you that in a second. So yeah, Fabio Vieira has left Arsenal also. And Fabio Vieira will be headed to... Uh, to uh, he's already at his former club, Porto. Yes, uh, Fabio Vieira has left Arsenal and he's gone back to Porto on loan for a season-long loan. And they've. They, this is the third deal that Arsenal have gotten done today alone so today we uh, today's a busy day for arsenal fabio vieira agreeing the deal sealing his move back to porto welcome back to the family of course and hopefully he has a good loan spell but with fabio vieira leaving reese nelson uh reese nelson is now also potentially going to be staying so we're gonna we're gonna be speaking about all these other uh players and all the factors that we need to talk about but before we go any further let me just make sure i touch on every single point before I just give you my open and honest opinions of, about things, um, let's let's go to the, let's go to this page. Eduardo Higgins, big up Eduardo. He, he's always gotten us updated. By the way, EAFC's uh, ratings are coming out. I don't know if you guys care about that, but you can go check that out. Him saying goodbye to his teammates at Real Sociedad. Of course, Aaron Ramsdale. Wolves are interested in Aaron Ramsdale. Uh, Wolves' interest in Aaron Ramsdale has cooled, actually. They're not interested anymore, but Southampton remain interested. As Southampton currently have a situation where they have a goalkeeper situation. And I'll, I'll just go over to that right now. 
Arsenal are demanding a, tr a permanent fee for Aaron Ramsdale, and Southampton, Wolves, and Ajax all came with loans. So we're going to have to see if somebody will cough up the actual fee, as Southampton are currently uh, experiencing an issue as uh, after the deal for this gentleman here fell off. And Ramsdale remains as one of the options. Arsenal would take a loan with an obligation to buy, so we can then sell Aaron Ramsdale, officially have him off our books, and Joao Garcia can can then be our potential goalkeeper replacement for Aaron Ramsdale. Personally, for me, if we don't get a fee for Aaron Ramsdale, it's very simple. He stays, and he's the number two. If we do get a transfer fee for him or an obligation to buy, then he goes on loan. Either way, it benefits the club if he leaves. If he stays, he's on ridiculous wages and we don't get a good transfer fee. And it's just another year down the line where his value gets reduced as he's a backup. Um, a lot of stuff about Mikel Moreno. Of course, we know we're waiting to see if anything can happen with Ramsdale. That's when we're going to go pull the trigger for Joe Garcia. There's only a couple of days left in the transfer window, so not much can be done there. Um, as the Southampton move for the Fire Nord keeper has fallen apart. We are currently waiting to see what happens there. Everything's about Mikel Moreno, of course, because the Mikel Moreno news dropped today. Um, in other news, Raheem Sterling to Arsenal. I don't believe that shit in a second. Uh, Manchester United have open talks for Raheem Sterling swap deals for Gina Sancho. So that makes more sense. But in my opinion, there is no way in hell Arsenal are going to go drop money on uh, Raheem Sterling. I've even heard other reports from Kia uh, from Football London saying that Arsenal are not interested in Raheem Sterling. So you don't have to worry. A lot of people are saying we should go for Raheem Sterling. Should we go for Raheem Sterling? You let me know. Do you think Arsenal should go for Raheem Sterling? I think a 29-year-old winger who doesn't really add much to our game doesn't benefit us at this moment in time. Plus, he would be on ridiculous wages. He's going to have to lower that mass massively wherever he goes. Um, Wojciech Szczesny, former Arsenal goalkeeper, also has retired from football uh, after after leaving Juventus this summer. More about Eddie Nketia, more about Mikel Moreno. Uh, as as Szczesny retiring, hopefully Szczesny has a good retirement and he finds something else to do while he's now out of football. Um, in other news, Chelsea have made a move for Ivan Tony, reported by Sky Sports reporter here, saying Chelsea have made a move, uh, move to sign Ivan Tony. Uh, they want a proven goal scorer number nine, and Tony, uh, incredible offer from Saudi Arabia, but Chelsea could offer Premier League football, which would mean Ivan Tony would prefer to stay in the Premier League. Um, that is very interesting. We're going to talk about that in a second, as AFTV did report something on that also. And I'm going to get back to the whole Ivan Tony, Victor Osman stuff. But there's also a situation here where Gabriel Jesus is still injured and he might not feature versus Brighton. So we're going to have to wait and see what happens with that situation. We also have more news on Kivior. Um, Let me show you guys what that news on Kivior is. Kivior is going to be staying at Arsenal, ladies and gentlemen. He will not be leaving as both Bologna and uh, Crystal Palace are no longer interested uh, at this moment in time. So Kibior will most likely be staying. Reported by ben, uh, by James Benj that uh, Kibior is expected to stay at Arsenal after the transfer window closes. So that's Kibior, Kieran Tierney, Tomiyasu, Timber, Zinchenko, and Calafuri, all players that can play in the left-back position. We basically have seven players that could play in that position. Uh, we have a lot of squad depth in the defensive end, and some of these players might need to be shifted out in the foreseeable future because we just have too many of these players in the defensive end of the pitch. And and KVR, I thought, was one player that was going to leave the club, but he looks like he will be staying. A lot of stuff about Eddie and Ketia, a lot of stuff about thing. We've seen that Deportivo and La Coruña have, have agreed a deal for um, Charlie Patino, and Charlie Patino saying goodbye to everybody on and off the pitch, honored to play for Arsenal. Shout out to him. Hopefully he enjoys himself. Of course, the Aaron Ramsdale news just keeps flowing. We're going to have to wait and see if there's anything more on the Aaron Ramsdale news. There is something on Kingsley Coleman also. Reportedly, Kingsley Coleman is it has decided to leave uh, Bayern. And before the, the what do you call it, uh, Friday deadline, he, he before the Friday deadline, he could be... A, leaving his destination is not yet known but several english clubs are interested being liverpool arsenal and somebody else so we'll have to wait and see if arsenal do pull the trigger on kingsley coleman would you take kingsley coleman personally for me i would take kingsley coleman but he would have to take a little bit lower wages we cannot be giving him 200k plus 
as a, as a as a squad depth player. I don't think he would be starting guaranteed week in week out, but he can definitely offer us some some game changing ability. There's also the stuff about Samuel Adingra. Uh Samuel Adingra from from uh, what do you call it, Crystal Palace. I mean, from Brighton does look like a solid player. We're gonna have to wait and see if there's any concrete uh, news on Samuel Adingra to Arsenal in the coming days, but he has been rumored as a potential target. Uh, the the Ivory Coast uh, winger and and uh, Bournemouth player is somebody who's been stepping up for uh, for Brighton lately. Why did I say Bournemouth? Brighton lately. And I do like what I see from him. He's, 20, he's 22 years old, if I'm not mistaken, or something like that, or 23, one or the other. Either way, he... He is looking like a dangerous player. We'll have to wait and see if Arsenal actually make a bid for Samuel Adingra. And in other news, there's also some random stuff going around uh, from Arsenal, from uh, Ivan Tony, from Victor Ozyman. Victor Ozyman is currently headed to PSG, it looks like. PSG are the club that are seriously interested in him. Chelsea are also interested in him, but he prefers to go to PSG or Arsenal over Chelsea. You also have... Man City looking to make a move apparently for Evan Ferguson. Yes, uh, this was this was very a, a weird thing that I seen yesterday from from a certain reporter that we don't really rate on this channel, Stephen, who who's a who's a flowerman, not really a a, a a journalist, reported that Arsenal are prepared to make a bid for Brighton's Evan Ferguson, and he also reported that Man City and Arsenal are eyeing. Uh, up uh, a bid for the Brighton Evan Ferguson. I don't believe it one bit. I think this is fake news. Um, moving on from that Evan Ferguson stuff, there is something that popped up that I seen a couple of minutes ago. It is none other than AFTV themselves reporting uh, some breaking news. AFTV's Robbie reported uh, early uh, uh, about an hour ago. AFTV's Robbie reported an hour ago. Yes, just an hour ago, AFTV, Robbie from AFTV reported that Ivan Tony, a shock move for Ivan Tony could be happening. Yes, Ivan Tony could be happening. Reportedly, Ivan Tony is uh, is being linked to Chelsea heavily right now. Yes, Tony is being linked heavily to Chelsea at this moment in time. But with that being said, at the, at the same time that he's being linked heavily to, um, to what do you call it? At the same time that he's being linked heavily to Chelsea, at this moment in time, there's rumors that Arsenal could be making a move for Ivan Tony at the same time. So Chelsea are making a move for Ivan Tony, but apparently AFTV are reporting, uh, AFTV are reporting, uh, Robbie from AFTV is reporting that Ivan Tony could be making a move regardless to uh, to one of the English, uh, to one of the London clubs, being Chelsea or Arsenal. But Chelsea seem to be the front runners as at this moment in time, the main the main reports coming out from Sky Sports is that Ivan Tony, Chelsea are now uh, making a move for Ivan Tony. If they do get Ivan Tony, I'll quite I'll be quite upset as I heavily rate Ivan Tony and I don't want him to play at Chelsea. But finally, the last thing that we need to talk about is um, Nico Williams. Will we get the Nico Williams deal done, um, guys? Ladies and gentlemen, Nico Williams. I don't know if that deal is going to happen. It, it is. It is a release clause. We need to pay the release clause. But paying the release clause, one thing you also have to make sure that the player wants to come. Um, Balbao did give him the uh, Balbao did give him the number ten shirt. It is going to be tough to persuade that player to leave. In an ideal world, Mikel Arteta would like another forward player. Arsenal. However, realistically, it might be possible in uh, the remaining. It might. It might. It might. Uh, however, realistically, about what might be possible in the remaining days. Long-term target Nico Williams is uh, un uh, un attainable in this time around. So we'll have to wait and see. Honestly, I don't know if if Nico Williams is even possible. At this moment in time, everything is just to, to everyone's just talking about Mikel Moreno, but I want to know what is going on with our winger situation because with with this uh potentially being let me read the, let me get this to read this again. One second. One second, one second. Nico Williams is perceived to be unattainable this time around. Nico Williams is seemed to be unattainable, and that also means Reese Nelson 
uh, is has spent the summer exploring a transfer away from the club. But with Fabio Vieira being leaving, there is now a, a significant chance he could stay after even asking the club for a transfer request. Reese Nelson could be staying. But we do have a problem we need a winger. If it's not Nico Williams, we need somebody regardless. Because if I go on the Arsenal website right now and I just show you the team, we don't have many attacking players. We don't have many attacking players. Eddie Nketi is leaving. Nelson is not of the level. We only have Leandro Trossard, Gabriel Martinelli, Jesus, Bakayo Saka, and Kai Havertz who can play up front and help us out. That's not enough squad depth in the attacking end for us to compete for major honors. We need another attacker minimum maybe two if we want to compete on all fronts but Kai Havertz, Bakayo Saka, Jesus, Martinelli and Trussard that's five players that's not enough we need at least one more serious uh, player to come into that attack and help us uh, in the game, in the games where we're going to need uh, rotation off the bench, we look at the bench. We only have one or two pieces at best, and if any of them get injured, we barely have any squad depth. So we need to get more attackers in. We only have a couple more days. The window closes in a couple days. We need to figure out what we're going to do. But at this moment in time, I'm starting to get a little concerned. Anyways, that's it for today's video. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this video. Please do like the video, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. I might go live later today if there's any breaking news. But for now. Love for the love, people. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Have yourselves a wonderful day. I'm out.